Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at damping in the context of simple harmonic motion. So let's get started. Now, it says here that an oscillating system will lose energy to frictional forces such as air resistance and eventually come to rest. We say that its motion is damped. This means that the amplitude of the motion decreases to zero because energy is lost from the system, i.e. it changes to other forms. It then goes on to say that damping forces are often deliberately introduced to reduce the motion of the system. For example, car suspensions are damped to stop them bouncing for a long time. Damping comes in various forms and we'll actually look at four different cases, but I first want to show you a few simulations. So I've got this set up of a mass on a spring and I'm going to let this mass oscillate about its equilibrium position, this dashed line here. So if I let it move back and forth, you see that right now I've chosen no damping. So that means that this will go forever, it will keep oscillating back and forth, and there's no air resistance or frictional forces acting to slow the motion of the mass. However, if I increase the amount of damping happening here, then you start to see the oscillations stop. And eventually the whole system is just going to come to a stop. And that was just with a little bit of damping. But if we started the motion again with lots of damping this time, then you'll see what happens to it very quickly. The motion just stops. And that is because, remember, damping is going to decrease the amplitude of the oscillations due to frictional forces such as air resistance and so on. Another simulation here will let us compare a damped system versus an undamped system. So for this first one, we're imagining that this mass on a string, this simple pendulum, is undergoing no damping at all. And that's a very unrealistic situation as that wouldn't happen in everyday life. And in this second situation, we've got a tube oscillating in a beaker of water. So if we look at the undamped system, first of all, the pendulum, you can see how the displacement will vary against time. We're going to have the amplitude just being constant and being unaffected. However, if we look at the second situation for this damped system of the tube in the beaker of water, then you'll see that we start having high amplitude, but then the amplitude will decrease over time for this damped system. And we can add some text on here to show that if you were to draw lines going from the peaks, then you would trace out these curves that actually get closer and closer to the x-axis. And that clearly shows a decrease in amplitude on either side of the x-axis. And you can also see if we overlap the initial graph of the undamped system, you can actually see that the period will increase. So the length of one wavelength, i.e. one full wave, will get bigger on the x-axis. So the time will get longer, i.e. the period will increase. And this means that since frequency equals one divided by the period, then they are inversely proportional, so the frequency must decrease. So we should have a smaller number of waves appearing as the amplitude reduces. Going back to the notes now, we said that damping comes in various forms, and we're going to look at four different cases. So the first one is one we've already looked at, which is the undamped system. So you'll see that when undamped, there is normal simple harmonic motion with no reduction in amplitude. So you get the amplitude being unaffected over time, and it's just a continuous wave pattern. Whereas we then have something called an underdamped system, which is a wee bit of damping, where with underdamping, the amplitude decreases slowly with time. So you see we start off with this high higher amplitude, but then when it reaches back up here, it's lower than it was to begin with, and then even lower than this one, and so on. So we have undamped, a wee bit of damping, and then if we have even more damping, there's something called critical damping or a system being critically damped. So it says that critical damping causes a system's amplitude to reach zero in the shortest possible time. An example of critical damping is in a car's suspension system. And remember, this is going to help your car or vehicle stop bouncing about if you go over a speed bump, for example. So you'll see we get no actual oscillations here. It's just the amplitude decreasing quickly over time to reach zero. And lastly, we have something called overdamping or an overdamped system where the amplitude will slowly decrease over time. So it says that overdamping does not oscillate, but moves slowly until coming to rest. So I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualize some of these. So we're back to looking at a mass on a spring, and right now I've set damping to zero or minimum. And if I click play here, you'll see how the oscillations of the amplitude varies with time. So we've got the amplitude being unaffected there. However, if I increase the damping a wee bit, then I should get an underdamped system. So if I click play here, you should see that the amplitude will be bigger than it is over here, and then gradually the amplitude will decrease over time. And if we increase the amount of damping even more, then we get something called critical damping. So if we click play here, you'll see we get no real oscillations, but the amplitude decreases to zero over a very short time. And if we play that again, you'll see the mass itself doesn't actually move past the equilibrium position of the motion. It just stops. So that's almost as if you had some kind of spring that just stretched but didn't actually compress again. 
and we can actually use this simulation to show the last case which was over damping because it doesn't have that as an option. We can't increase the damping any more than we just had. So just to summarize, we saw four cases of damping. The undamped system where you've got no effect to the amplitude. The underdamped system where the amplitude will slowly decrease to zero over time. We've got critical damping where the amplitude will decrease to zero in a short time. And then we've got over damping where the amplitude will slowly come to rest in a very, very long time. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.